Bring it. No pressure. No pressure, right? You know what pressure does? Pressure makes diamonds. That's what pressure does. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm not a science guy, but I think that's right. Don't look it up, at least not yet. Um, yeah, did anybody else expect Aaron to end with joy? And then he didn't. There it is. There it is. It's a rally call. Well, hey, let's do this, everybody. Let's go over to John 1. We're going to look at verses 1 through 4 because that's kind of important for everything else that we might do, not only in a message but also in our lives. Let's look at John 1, 1 through 4, and I'm just going to read it to you. I, um, I was reading an essay uh, this week, rereading an essay this week by Glenn Scrivener called A Theology of Preaching, which sounds really dry, but it's really, really good, and I can boil it down into, into one sentence. Uh, anytime you get up to minister to anyone, especially in a pulpit, the main point is that Christ must be proclaimed biblically. So I just pray this morning that whatever... I'm speaking, Lord, let it be what you want to say and not my opinion and not my, not my past and not, my, not anything else that comes from me, Father, but let me be a pure vessel that you can speak through. Because if you speak, Lord, then we'll hear and we'll listen and we'll be changed. Uh, so let's begin with uh, John 1, 1 through 4. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him. And without him, nothing was made that was made or that has been made in some versions. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. I want to begin there because it's really the, the declarations that we were making before, before we got to this point in the service. So important, so important, so important to continue to proclaim Christ, to continue to proclaim Jesus with everything that we face, with, with everything that comes against us, everything that we see rise up within us, our default response should be the name of Jesus because he is the word. We want to proclaim the word over something. It's as simple as declaring Jesus. He is the word. So I declare over this service today, over this message, over your ears, over my voice, over the kids upstairs, uh, I just, I declare Jesus. Lord, let your spirit be here infusing all of us. Let it guide everything that we do and let it color everything that we see so that we see it in the way that you want us to. Amen. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him and without him, nothing was made that was made. In him was life and the life was the light of men, and the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. You can look at comprehend as being a couple of different things. The darkness doesn't understand it. The darkness is confused by the light. You ever had that experience where something's happening and you proclaim the light, and all of a sudden it seems like the darkness doesn't quite know what to do with that, and there's a breakthrough, and there's a way where there wasn't a way before. It's because the darkness doesn't understand, doesn't comprehend, it doesn't get where Jesus is coming from, excuse me, coming from. And so when we bring Jesus to bear, and we, we lay ourselves down and proclaim Christ, then we have something that we're bringing into the situation that the darkness cannot understand and has no defense against, right? Comprehend also means encircle or envelop. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not found a way yet to comprehend it, to get around it, to keep us from seeing it. So I want to encourage you with this this morning before I get into what I think actually is the message. Um, let your light shine before people. Understand that you carry the light in you. You carry the word in you. You carry Jesus himself, the word, in you. That is a light that is not only life to you, but that the darkness cannot comprehend and cannot envelop. So in every situation, I just want to just encourage you with this this morning. Bring Jesus to bear in it. Proclaim Christ. Proclaim Jesus over every situation, over everything that you face, over every victory and over every trial. Proclaim Jesus. Let his light shine. Let his light shine, and the darkness will find no way to comprehend it. The darkness will find no way to encircle it. That light cannot be put out. 
So let's come out and let's shine a light that cannot be put out. Amen? Good. I'm glad we can agree. Woo! Now, the reason I'm sharing that is because we're going to spend a little time in Matthew today. I said that like it was like, ooh. We're going we're gonna to go to Matthew. So I snuck it right in. Didn't even see that coming. So we're going to be in Matthew, but we're going to be in chapter 13. Matthew 13, and I think we're going to go to, uh, we're going to go to verse 3. I'm going to share a parable with you. It's a good idea to share the words of Jesus, and whenever he uh, explains something, it's a really good idea to get his explanation so that I don't give you mine and get it wrong. So here we go. He spoke many things to them in parables, saying, behold, a sower went out to sow. By the way, I'm in the New King James today, which is crazy. I've like stepped up my game from the ERV. I know. I know. Who would have thought? I know. Welcome. Did you say welcome? <laughs> well, thank you. It's nice. It's nice to be here. You can explain some of this to me later. Okay. He spoke many things to them in parables, saying, behold, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seed fell by the wayside. If this is a brand new thing to you, pay attention. It's really cool. If it's not brand new, pay attention because it's still going to be really cool. All right? As he sowed, some seed fell by the wayside, and the birds came and devoured them. Some fell on stony places and where they did not have much earth, and they immediately sprang up because they had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, they were scorched. And because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up and choked them. But others fell on good ground, and they yielded a crop. Some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. He who has ears, let him hear. Amen? And I feel like Jesus, uh, we have the same situation going on now that he did then. He who has ears, let him hear. And, and a lot of us are like, I heard it. What, what do you mean by that? But I heard that. So let's move on ahead because the disciples said exactly that. They said, what do you mean? Can you explain that to us? Because nobody talks to us this way. So let's go to verse 18. Jesus explains what he means by the parable of the sower, which, again, is something that you've heard before, but there's something in here that I feel like I'm supposed to be bringing today. So Jesus says, Therefore, hear the parable of the sower. So when anyone hears the word of the kingdom and doesn't understand it, the wicked one comes and snatches away what was sown into his heart. This is he who received the seed by the wayside. But he who received the seed on stony places, this is he who hears the word Immediately he receives it with joy, but he has no root in himself. So it endures only for a while. When tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, I find that very interesting. We'll come back there. When persecution or tribulation arises because of the word, immediately he stumbles. Now he who receives seed among the thorns is he who hears the word. And the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, they choke it out and he becomes unfruitful. But he who receives seed on the good ground is he who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and produces some a hundredfold, some 60, some 30, right? So even with that explanation, there's a couple things that I want to I share about this um, because we know from John chapter 1 that the word is life and it's light to us. And actually, I was telling Travis this a couple days ago, like that analogy of a forward pass in football, you know, like you pass the ball and there are three things that can happen and two of them are bad, right? So that's kind of a risky proposition. And I feel that way about the parable of the sower. It's like we're sowing the seed and there's four things that can happen and three of them don't seem very good, right? Uh, but but it, it, it's this way now. It's been, it's been this way for always. Jesus is the word, and that word is life and light to men and, and women, sons and daughters, all of us. It's light to us. Uh, so Jesus came to earth with the ministry of reconciliation, right? He came to earth to be the living word, the example of the Father's heart. He came to lay himself down so that he could be in that good soil and spring up and see himself produce in 30, 60, 100 fold in us. Now that word, both the, the literal word, the things he was saying, and the word, the metaphorical word, Jesus, those did not come here without challenge, 
right? I mean, oh my goodness, we wouldn't be where we are today if Jesus hadn't been challenged and had overcome the challenge, right? So that ministry of reconciliation, that revealing of the heart of the Father, that connection of us one to another, that is something that the darkness cannot understand, and it can't envelop it, it can't comprehend it, and so it tries to eliminate it. But that doesn't mean that it gets to win. That doesn't mean that it gets to win. So Jesus came here to earth to us in the, in the form of a person, and he was here to, to show us how to be one, to show us how to connect through our heart to the Father, to show us these things that the Father wanted us to know that we didn't know. And he was challenged at every step. He was challenged by the establishment. He was challenged by people in his hometown who didn't think he could do no good. He was challenged even by his own, his own friends and disciples at times. He was challenged. He was challenged. He was challenged. And he met those challenges with the same response time and time and time again. What's that response? He just laid himself down. So, okay, I'm going I'm to, let's go over this again. Let me, let's go over this again. Because I can't say it and tell you this is the way and then not do it and show you when the challenge comes. Because then I'm just like everybody else. I'm saying one thing and doing another. I'm coming to show you a different way. Right? So the challenge. The challenge is that, that, that Jesus outlines in the parable of the sower. I want to go through those a little bit because the challenges don't change. And I know that it's really, it's really easy to blame a lot of things on, you know, the devil, blame a lot of things on the darkness. I had, I had a big spending spree on Amazon, and now I can't afford my rent. The devil is attacking my finances. No, not true, right? Man, I was having a grumpy day. I'm real a jerk to that guy, and now he doesn't want to shake my hand. Devil's attacking our relationship. Nope, nope, that's not it. That's not it. There are some things that I believe are orchestrated by the enemy to throw things in our way, to get in our way, to take us off course, to divide us from people, to distance us as we follow that divided path, and then eventually to get us alone and to kind of take care of us there, right? That's the plan that the enemy has. But just because we have a challenge doesn't mean that the enemy was the problem. So many times the problem, and I'm talking about myself, so many times the problem that I have in seeing the word that he's spoken over me, the word that he's spoken over this body in particular, the word that he's spoken over his church, because I have a part to play in that as well. You have a part to play in that as well. You guys are nation and global wide with your, with your, with your scope and your reach, with the importance that you have in the kingdom. We need to remember that, that what you do here does indeed change the world. And it's all about, the, it's all about the, the positioning of our heart again and again and again. So I know that when I have fallen short of being that example that Jesus called me to be, of walking in that ministry of reconciliation that last time I was speaking, I was talking about how he gave us the ministry of reconciliation. He gave it to me, and sometimes I don't use it well. Sometimes it's because the enemy has thrown something in my path. But most of the time, that's on me. Most of the time, it's either, as, you, as I'm going to show here real, real quick, it's either comes from things that I've dreamed up or distance that I've got in my heart, right? And the devil can't touch either one of those things if I don't let him. So most of that's on me, right? So, oh, goodness. Got to remember not to breathe now. Good. Oh, man. So Jesus is explaining to us the parable of the sower. He says, when someone hears the word of the kingdom and doesn't understand it, the wicked one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart. This is the one who received by the wayside. Jesus is pouring himself out to us constantly. That this, this message of the kingdom we're receiving week after week after week after week. Right? There's, there's opportunity at every turn for us to... Uh, to, to receive what Jesus is trying to, to pour out and pour into us. But, but sometimes we stop at, I don't understand it. That doesn't make sense to me. That, that, that doesn't jive with the thing that I thought was true. Or, you know, I, I've got an opinion about that, 
And what about this person? Or what about that person? And we allow our mind to get in the way of what Jesus said was truth, absolutely and positively. Like, I've, I've come so they can be one as the Father and I are one. And sometimes I don't understand that because my opinion about somebody gets in the way. How can I be one with them? They did that. When, I mean, honestly, when I think about it, I'm pretty terrible also. I was like, if they did that, I'm glad they don't know what I did. You know, there's, uh, gosh, the, it's that old, the old principle of when you point a finger, there's three pointing back at you, right? And then a thumb sticking in the air doing nothing at all. Um, but the challenge to the word, the challenge to this word, the challenge to the ministry of reconciliation that Jesus has lived and died and ascended and, and given to us, empowered the Holy Spirit to walk us through it. That ministry of reconciliation is challenged, and many times the challenge comes in my mind. It comes in my mind, questioning, God, how could you use me? Questioning, is that really what you want to do with me? Or doubting, or fearing, or having my opinion that I think is so much better than the thing God actually said to do, right? And, and, and when I realize that that's happening, well, there's a, there's a remedy God gave to us. I'll get to that in a second because I don't want you to tune out. I want you to think that I'm going somewhere. So we move on. He who received, verse 20, he who received the seed on stony places, this is he who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy, but he has no root in himself. It endures only for a while, and then when tribulation and persecution arise because of the word, immediately he stumbled. So sometimes the challenge comes in our mind. Sometimes the challenge comes in our heart. No roots there. We hear it. We love it. It sounds great to us. God, ministry of reconciliation, you've empowered me to, to, to bring others together. I'm going to be one with you. I'm going to be one with everybody else. I love that word. That's amazing. And that's the surface level that we stay at. And we don't say, Lord, work this word in my heart. Get this deep down into me so that it's not just something that I love to hear that I want to walk in. Don't make this, God, something that I hear and I want to, I want to act like I get it. Lord, this, make this who I am. Make me, we were praying in the, in the uh, choir room beforehand, and, and Steve was, was declaring, you know, let, let this, uh, let the people of the, of, of the earth, people all over, let us all see that, as Pastor was talking about with, you know, the difference between ministry and kingdom, let us all see that we're part of a kingdom, and everywhere we go is ministry. Everything that we do in our lives is ministry. We don't have a ministry. We are the ministry of God. We are the, we are the body, the, the, the one body that held all of this awesome stuff ascended. And through the Holy Spirit, we're the new body. We're the new body. So everywhere our foot travels is ministry, right? And, and so, and so when, uh, when we receive this word, I feel so sad for the person who's like, you know, the stony ground, you know. I hear it. I love it. I want this. I receive it with joy. But Lord, I never, I never actually wanted it enough to ask you to really bury it down deep in me so it becomes a part of me. Take root in me. Take root in me. Fortunately, there's a remedy for that as well. Now, he who received the word, or he who received the seed among the thorns is he who hears the word, but the cares of the world, the deceitfulness of riches, they choke the word, and he becomes unfruitful. So sometimes it's the mind that offers the challenge that causes me to fall short. Sometimes it's the heart that offers the challenge. But sometimes it's just life, y'all. Sometimes circumstances just happen. Cares of this world, riches, uh, you know, situations that happen. Pastor was uh, referencing, you know, my, my back injury. Oh, my Lord. Be careful what you say when you're speaking to a bunch of people because... Okay, so the last time I spoke here was January 6th, and it was that morning I was leaning over to look at the way I go upstairs like a gazelle. It's amazing. <laughs> so I have these pedals right here, right, and they do cool stuff sometimes, and right, Steve's like, eh. Um, and so before service, I wanted to move one of those knobs just a little bit, so I bent over to move that knob just a little bit, and when I did, right here, I felt 
And I thought, well, that's weird, but it's, ha you know, it's happened before. Uh, I've, usually a couple days, and, I, and I'm fine. It's good. You know, it's a little hard to bend over. It's a little hard to, to move and stuff. Well, I, I, I ended up thinking, I can beat this. I can beat this by strenuously exercising all week long. That's a good idea. I don't want to slow down. I don't want to take a break. I don't want to do anything, you know, that, that is going to... I want to do what I want to do. I don't want to stop and rest and wait. I should have stopped and rested and waited. That would have been good. So January 12th, I guess it was, I couldn't... I had trouble getting out of bed. Came here to church anyway um, and, uh, you know, did what we do. That was the 50th anniversary celebration for Pastor and Sue. We were over there and, and we all day long... It was a, big day. You know, we had stuff going on all day. Tried to get out of bed Monday morning, and I could not get out of bed Monday morning because, ouch, it really hurt. But I remember on the 6th when I was speaking here, I said, and pastor was referencing like things that you learn through trials. I remember I said, hey, family, church family, I looked at all of you. I did this sweeping glance over all of you, and I said, just please never let me forget that I had to be rescued. Never let me forget that. And a week later, man, I did not forget <laughs> that I needed to be rescued. Oh, my Lord. Um, and so as I'm, as I'm laying down in bed, like in a lot of pain, and Jennifer is the most amazing person in the world, taking care of all of the family, taking care of all the stuff she normally does, and taking care of her invalid husband, helping me do little things like turn over in the bed, put on shoes and other items of clothing that I won't mention, but it's not the thing you want to have somebody do. Uh, helping me walk to important places like the bathroom. That's, you know, it's, it's those types of things when you realize, if I didn't have her here right now, I could not do the things I need to do today. And so I was laying in my bed on, on Monday, and then on Tuesday, I didn't get up for three days, two days, two and a half days. I was laying in my bed and thinking, okay, Lord, I know that you didn't knock my back out. I know that. That doesn't seem like you to me. And my name's not Jacob, right? So, and so what is it that I'm supposed to be learning here? What are you supposed to be, t oh, by the way, I have my hand here because in my head I'm laying to my side. What am I supposed to be learning here? What, what's the lesson? And immediately he <laughs> brought back, I had this flash of me standing here going, never let me forget that I was in need of rescue because I can do a lot of things on my own pretty well. I'm pretty competent, but never let me forget that I was in need. And I thought, you could have done that different, God. <laughs> you, I mean, you can do anything. You could have just like, reminded me, like, get, you know, on a chalkboard, you could have walked by and it was magically there or something. You had somebody, I didn't need this, but, but it's very, you know, it's very important. And in, in that, in that situation, my heart just continued to be drawn back to all of you and so grateful for people who were praying. And thank you very much for people who were praying and, and bringing meals and, 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 and just helping us in so many ways. I was um, grateful for that. And I was in need of rescue and, and you guys rescued me. And I thank you for that. That's whew, give yourselves a hand. I don't, it seemed like the appropriate thing to say right there. Um, but getting back to today's message, sometimes the challenge to this word that he's entrusted us with comes in our minds. Sometimes it comes in our hearts. Sometimes it comes in our circumstances and just life can cause us to get off track and to forget who we are and who he's caused us, who he's called us to be. Um, fortunately, he also provided a remedy for all of these challenges. And I'm going to tell you what it is. He who receives seed on the good ground is he who hears the word and understands it. This is verse 23. Who indeed bears fruit and produces some a hundredfold, some 60, some 30. Okay. So if you look ahead in verse 37. A lot of things, you know, that Jesus says have kind of double meanings. This one, I guess, has kind of a triple meaning. He's talking about the, the sower, and in the parable of the, the sower, um, the seed is the word, the, the, the word of the kingdom. 
But here he also is talking about the parable of the tares, and he says, but he who sows good seed is the son of man. So Jesus is the seed. He's also the sower. And if Jesus is the seed and then he sows himself into us, then we become what? We become, well, yes. Yes. Okay. He who sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. The good seeds are the sons of the kingdom. The good seeds are the sons of the kingdom. So when we think about just, just biology, y'all, and how, and how if we're going to bear fruit, that requires more than just one individual, more than just one seed. It requires connection. It requires communion. It requires that there be, um, as pastor said one time, a cross-pollination, you know, of, of, of the spirit. Um, what we, uh, what Jesus has in mind for us is to bear fruit and to produce. So to take the word, the seed, Jesus, the Lord, into ourselves and to see him be produced through us so that there are more like us, so there are more of ourselves, so that Jesus can be manifest and real, not just in my life, but my life affects your life, and your life affects someone else's life, and their life affects someone else's life, and that source of freedom and joy and liberty and healing and, and connection, that source of every good thing that comes from heaven gets not only deposited in me, but I produce fruit that allows it to get deposited in someone else. And so in order to overcome, challenges come, but in order to overcome these challenges, in order to bear fruit, what we have to do is we have to embrace connection. We really do. That's the remedy. If I take a look at every one of these things in the parable of the, of the sower, he who received by the wayside is the one who hears the word, doesn't understand it, and then the wicked one comes and snatches away what was sown into his heart. So if I hear the word, I don't understand it, but I'm not in connection with anybody else, then that word's going to get snatched away every single time. But my remedy, my dragnet, my, my saving grace that God hopefully has surrounded me with is a group of people who has a different perspective on some things, the different people who can speak into my life and help illuminate. Not only can the Holy Spirit help illuminate, but if I'm not mature enough to say, God, illuminate that for me, hopefully I have people in my life who can help me to do that. So connection to others in the body, connection where we can communicate one to another, where we can share and talk about the things of God, talk about what God is doing and what he's speaking and, and help work that word into one another. Connection is the remedy for the lack of understanding. Connection is the remedy for misunderstanding what it is that God might be saying. If I have people that I can trust who can come and correct me and say, well, I don't think that's what that meant. Okay, let's talk about this. Let's move forward. If I'm not in connection with people, then I'll go ahead thinking everything I do is absolutely the right thing. And everywhere I go is absolutely where I need to be going. There's no, there's no checks. There's no balances. There's, there's, there's no, you know, people think that Boundaries and restraint sometimes is a bad thing. I really rely on it in my life. I really do, because I can go off the rails if there's not somebody there to say, hey, not a good idea. I wish somebody had been right there on the six when I was about to bend over to, to, and say, you know, that's not a good idea. Bend at the knees. Bend at the knees. That would have been good, you know? So the challenge coming to my mind and my understanding uh, is it can be, it can be, eradicated by connection to the other believers, connection to those in the body. Uh, same with the, the, you know, what's going on in, in my heart. I want to be surrounded by people like you, by people who are pressing in to more of God, pressing in to know him, pressing in to have the nature of God revealed not only through your heart as an individual, but through your heart as a body. I, that's, what, that's what I want to dive into. And when I'm surrounded by that, then I don't go very long with my heart being hard and my heart being unwilling to dive in. It's, it's one of those things when you're, you know, you, you're surrounded by hot coals, you heat up. There's just no other way about it. And, and, that's, and that's the power of the connection that I have with all of you is that 
you keep me pressing in. You keep me diving in to the word. You keep me wanting for the, the roots to be deeper and deeper and deeper so that the tree can grow higher and higher and the fruit can be 30, 60, 100 fold. Uh, circumstantially as well. Circumstantially as well. When, uh, when the challenge comes and it's a circumstance, once again, if I'm all by myself, I could, I'll just do anything that seems right in my own eyes. I need connection to the body. I need mothers and fathers in my life. I need brothers and sisters who are going to be able to come to me and to say, you know, you can overcome this. Or yeah, I've got a word for you. God told me this about that. And I want to encourage you with this. Or to say, you look down. Can I pray for you? I need that in my life. I need that in my life. I need the connection to the body to be able to help me to overcome the circumstantial challenges that might keep me from moving forward in the word that God has called me to. We all need that. We all need that. And so, um, in order to bear fruit and produce more, more seeds, in order to become all that God has for us to become, it's so important that we embrace connection. It's so important we embrace connection, and it's so important that, that we truly embrace the ministry of recon reconciliation that he's called us to, that we choose daily to walk in a way that would allow the Spirit of God to be manifest through us, that we would choose daily to put aside, you know, my, I want to put aside my own opinions about things. I want to put aside a lot of times, not every time, I, if I'm real honest, I want to put aside most times my own desires about things. I want to put aside, as it relates to what God has called me to, I want to put aside my plans and my ideas about how that needs to come about. Because God has said that this is what we're, where we're going. God has said we are ministers of reconciliation and, and that his body is to become one body, speaking with one voice, carrying one heart, creating one sound, marching to the beat of one drum. Unified, unified, unified. And of course, that's the kind of message, that's the kind of purpose, that's the kind of mission that is going to draw challenge. But I want to I want to encourage you with this, though, in case none of the rest of this has been encouraging. I want to encourage you with this, that the challenge comes. I don't know if this is going to be encouraging or not, maybe not. But honestly, it's not you that's drawing the challenge. It's the word you carry that's drawing the challenge, right? The challenges that I face that I bring on myself, most of those things are circumstantial. Most of those things are bad decisions. Most of those. But the testing that comes from the enemy, that's not because I'm anything special. That's because of what I carry. As it was in, you know, since, since the beginning, as it was in the beginning, the enemy has come to battle the thing that Jesus is trying to establish on the earth. That hasn't changed, except that now he lives in me. So when the challenge comes, oh, woe is me. No, 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 not woe is me. I just need to make sure that I get the right mindset and understand that the thing that's being challenged has never lost. The thing that is in me that is being challenged, the word of God, the spirit of the Lord that is in me that is being challenged remains undefeated. He, he's, he's I, don't, I don't know what the count is now. It's definitely more than one and oh, but at least that. He's one and oh. So the thing that I carry, the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness cannot comprehend it. The thing that you carry, the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness cannot understand it, and the darkness can't envelop it. That's what you carry. That is what you carry, and that's what brings the challenge. So when the challenge comes, it's up to us not to face that challenge in our own mind, in our own heart, in our own decision-making process, it's just up to us to let the light loose and to let, that, let, to let the Spirit of Jesus go and do the battle for us. Lord, your will be done. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Your will be done in my life. Your will be done in this church. Your will be done in this world as it is in heaven. I'm not worried about anything because I know that you are undefeated, Jesus. And I know that you have in your heart the desire for all people to know the love of the Father. What could possibly, what, what could I do in my own strength that could possibly add to that? Not a thing. So, Lord, let, 
do the thing you want to do. It's the word you carry that is drawing an opposition. And so we have to determine as vessels to be stronger, to be smarter, to be more resolute in, <laughs> that sounds odd, right? Because I'm saying, you know, let yourself go. But we do, we need to be stronger, we need to be smarter, we need to be more resolute than the challenge that comes. It's, I am gonna quote the Punisher. Yeah, Frank Castle, the Punisher, in the season two of The Punisher. They said, you're walking into a trap. He goes, but I know it's coming. They said, but it's a trap. He goes, it's not a trap if you know it's coming. Right? But not everybody should watch all of season two of The Punisher. I'm just going to tell you that right now. Um, but it's true. There are challenges that come, but we can be smarter than the challenges that are coming because the Lord has told us already, this is going to come. Count it all joy when various trials come upon you. Trials are coming. Count it all joy, though. Choose joy. Choose the light that's inside. Right? So, we are, we're here to be more resolute than the challenge, stronger than the challenge, smarter than the challenge. We have to determine, um, my last of my notes, let's determine to play the long game. Let's determine to imitate those who through faith and patience inherit the promise. Because the word that we carry is not able to be defeated. So it's up to in, us to ensure that the vessel that carries it overcomes like the thing that we carry. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Thus endeth the message for today. Mm. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Um, so let's, let's do something here real quick. Is it okay if I do something, Pastor? Did you have something in mind? Okay. Let's, let's do something here. Let's Let's make a declaration. Can we all stand up? Because declarations just don't seem to be as cool when you sit down. Let's make it. But first, before we make a declaration, let's just, let's, let's, go to, let's go in prayer. Let's thank God for what he's doing today, what he's revealing through his spirit, what he's showing to us. Lord, we thank you. We praise you, Jesus. Let's, let's just speak out in the spirit. And worship team, yeah, come on up, y'all. Well, as, soon as, as soon as we figure out what we're doing. Um, Lord, we bless you. Let's begin to bless the Lord. Let's lift him up. Let's just declare how good he is. Declare, declare his, let's just declare Jesus over our lives and over this church. We just, we call in the name of Jesus. Jesus, we honor you in this house. We bless your name, Lord. We declare Jesus. We, we call upon the name of Jesus over every circumstance, over every trial, over every triumph, Lord. Everything, we, every situation that we face, and let's do this while we're in prayer. Let's, let's, let's put our hands up here on our heads. We're just going to just invite the presence of God into our minds, just as, however that seems right to you. But let's just declare Jesus over our minds just for a moment. Father, I thank you for, for blessing our minds. We just declare the name of Jesus over our minds, Father. Give us the mind of Christ. Father, help us to get rid of the, of the, the ways of thinking that that aren't beneficial to us and that get in the way of your, of your glory and your presence. Father, clean our minds, cleanse our minds, heal our minds, free our minds from, from things of the past that get us into bad cycles and bad situations. Father, I declare the name of Jesus over my mind today. I declare your word reigns supreme in my mind, Lord, and over my heart. Let's go to the heart. Lord, create in us a clean heart and renew a right spirit in us. Create in us a clean heart. Renew a right spirit in us, Father. Let our heart beat with your heart. And Father, open up our hearts. Make them soft ground. Make them soft ground that you can dig your roots down deep into. Father, when we hear your word, we ask that that word would go deep down into our hearts. That you would establish something everlasting in us. Father, our hearts are yours. Our hearts are yours. Our hearts are yours. Father, we just we lift up this church and these people that make this church, we lift them up to you. If you could just like, yeah, just sweep around this room and just begin to bless the people in this house. You're walking with some amazing people and I pray that each and every one of you is blessed today. I extend my hand towards you and in faith, I just declare that the blessing of the Lord is upon you. The blessing of God makes you wealthy and he has no sorrow with it. The blessing of the Lord is upon you and I call every part of your life blessed. Your, your finances are blessed. Your relationships are blessed. I call your health blessed. Your mind, your body, your spirit are blessed. 
And, and I just, I, I declare blessing and prosperity for you in all areas of your life. We loose it in the name of Jesus. We loose it. And we loose this word, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Father, we let the light shine. We let the light loose. And we just declare, Father, have your way in this place. Have your way in our hearts and have your way in our lives and in our house. In Jesus' name, Jesus amen. Name. Amen. Amen. Wow. Glory. You know, um, it's, 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 do you just feel that there's what he's talking about? You know, the word became flesh yes. dwelt among us. And the, the thing that blows your mind, think about it. You are becoming that word. You're becoming that word. Now, if you don't have a revelation of that, what we do here seems real strange, you know, because most most of the time in church, well, we, you know, we go in and it's like a superficial. But but when you see the people speaking, and there's so many of you that can just speak a word, because because you're becoming that word. And that, that some of you are bringing 30-fold, 60-fold, 100-fold. Guess what? I think that's only just begun to crack the surface. The harvest comes when the Word of God flourishes in the midst of us. Amen? So uh, I, I, I receive it. And it's the connection. You know, there's a connection to the Lord. But if you're one of those that refuse to be connected with others, you can feel left out of this. If you just kind of hold back a little bit, you feel left out of this. It's like discouraging. But if you're jumping in the middle of the pond, it's the most incredible thing you've ever seen. It's This is something new that's birthing upon the earth. It's something new upon the earth. This is We're at the beginning of what we're seeing, not only here, but all over the world. We're at the beginning of the church becoming the kingdom of God. Amen? And... This word is, is a destructive force. We were talking about that earlier. The word of God comes like a destruction. And it, the Lord said, if we will fall upon it, it we'd be broken. It creates. But if we don't, it falls on us. And it becomes a destruction to us. But the Lord said, I'm going to bring life to you by the word that I'm speaking. The words that I speak, the Lord said, Darren, are spirit and their life. And the words I'm speaking to you are creating in your heart yes. my image, my will upon the earth. You're, the world is seeing me through you. Yes. Christ in you is the hope of glory. Yes. Hallelujah. Christ in you is the hope of glory. Christ in you is the hope of glory. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo, I feel like, I feel kind of like a farmer. You go out, and, you know, you look at the tree and you see all the fruit. Have you ever done that? You know, we, I used to have an apple tree. I'd go out and you know, all these apples. And uh, I look at you and I see the fruit. You're the fruit of this thing that God's doing. I'm excited. How about you? Wow.